Hey guys, this is Gene Jensen, and today I want to show you how to fish a football head jig. All right, first of all, what is a football head jig? Um, to put it in layman's terms, it is a jig with a head shaped like a football. What is it for? It is basically, it's a dragging jig. It's a, what we call a casting jig, but I call it a dragging jig. You cast it out a long ways, you let it sink to the bottom, and you drag it along the bottom, and you work it on the bottom. And what you're trying to imitate is a crawfish. So, um, Let's dive into it real quick. I'm going to dive into the what's and where's and everything else. So, first of all, choice of jigs, colors. Um, the biggest thing I, the, the, the biggest way I keep it simple is uh, get three colors. Brown, green pumpkin, I like mine with a little bit of orange, and black or black and blue. And, uh, and just take all three of them, because all three of them work in just about every watercolor. The muddier the water though, the less like a brown will work, or the less a green pumpkin will work, and the more a black and blue will work. But a black and blue will work in just about any watercolor except for very, very clear. So it kind of keeps, keeps it simple. These right here are gridiron football jigs, my favorite kind. Made by Seabird Outdoors, I actually designed the colors of all of their Fluke Master Series jigs. Um, I'll leave a link down in the description for all that stuff. But anyway, now I want you to take a good look at this jig. It's missing something. It's missing a trailer. And my choice of trailers is, is pretty simple. I like them that kick and I like them that don't kick. And so for a jig, for a football head jig, because I'm dragging them, the kicking action, it doesn't need to be, you know, really, really big. So I may or may not choose you know, something like a vile crawl, which is one of my favorite jig trailers, but it's got a lot of kick to it and a dragging jig really, for me, I find something that kicks a lot, kicks less that works better. So I usually go to something like this uh, for a football jig. This is a beaver style bait. It's a, um, it's a structure bug by, uh, by striking rage tail. And uh, what I do is I take and I, I bite the first quarter inch off, half inch off, Give it a good flat top, just like that. It's not gross, guys. And I put it on. So you ask yourself, Gene, or you ask me, <laughs> Gene, why are you putting a green pumpkin trailer on a black and blue jig? Because I catch more fish with a green pumpkin trailer on a black and blue jig. I don't know why, but if it's really, really, mud, really muddy water, I'm going to do something totally different, and I'm going to throw a black, out, black jig or a black trailer on there. I just like green pumpkin on a black and blue jig, and I just seem to catch more fish. Now, another thing you've got to realize when you're setting these jigs up is you do want some action out of those, out of those trailer, out of that trailer, out of those claws. So you've got to trim that skirt up. A lot of time, the skirt comes you know really really short about like this and you want to be able to trim that skirt up quite a bit to make sure that it is uh it's it's what the, you know what the fish wants and make sure that you get the action that you need out of the trailer all right so that's all set up and it's ready to go almost now another thing i check when i get new tr new jigs is this skirt when i squinch it down like this i want the tips of the, or not skirt, it's a, a weed guard. Anyway, I want the tips of it to come at, basically come at the same level when I push it down as the barb on the hook. These are a little bit long. So I take out my trusty nips. And I cut. Goodness, somebody must have just brought some dogs to the campsite. All right, break out my scissors and I cut it down to where when I squinch it, it comes down to the level of the barb. Okay, so that's ready to fish. Let's talk about the rods and reels. Hey, if any time during this video you realize you like it and you might be learning something, hit that subscribe button down there. It's free and it helps me. Thanks. The rod and the reel, I feel, are the most important thing with this whole setup outside of the jig itself. Um, what I like to fish a football head jig on is a medium heavy rod or a heavy rod, but I prefer a medium heavy 
seven foot three to seven foot six inch rod. You're gonna be making these really, really long casts. So you really want um, a rod that can get it out there. The longer the rod, the longer the cast. Uh, and, and you're not worried so much about accuracy most of the time. So what I've got here is I've got a, a, a seven foot three medium heavy blackout rod and a high speed reel, eight one to one. I wanna be able to get that bait back to me as fast as I can to make another cast, or I wanna be able to catch up with a fish if it picks it up, comes to the boat, which a lot of times they do. Um, not most of the time, but you know, a lot of times. But a high speed gear ratio reel, this is a Concept A. Um, I've got 65 or 60 or 65 pound braid on this on this rod and then I've got a fluorocarbon leader 20 pound fluorocarbon leader now that's not necessary for this whole setup you can do it with 15 to 20 pound monofilament copolymer or straight fluorocarbon I just chose to use braid and to a fluorocarbon leader because I feel like I get a little bit more sensitivity out of the braid of course I do it has no stretch all right so I'm gonna set my camera up on the stand I'm gonna get out on the water we're gonna go drag this thing around Around and I'm going to show you how to fish it. Oh, I almost forgot this shirt. This is the fishing shirt of the month club shirt for the month of September. It's going to ship out September the 7th. I'll leave the link down in the description to go sign up for the fishing shirt of the month club. This month's giveaway are two giveaways, a 13 fishing rod and reel combo and a trip with me. So somebody can win a trip with me if you have both this shirt and last month's shirt. And you can go back and buy last month's shirt if you're a member of the club. So anyway, let's go fishing. All right, so let's talk about where to fish it. The kind of places I'm looking for are, are places that have a hard bottom. I'm gonna be dragging this thing, so if it's got a silty bottom, if you're fishing a little pond and it's nothing but mud on the bottom, this is not gonna work. So if it's got a silty bottom, it ain't gonna work because your bait is basically dragging through the silt and the bass aren't gonna go down there and eat it in the mud. But if you can find a good hard point, a point of land that sticks out into the water, if you, whether you're bank fishing or you're from a boat, you want to cast something like this on it. You want to fish that, fish that really, really good. This is a nice hard bottom point. Actually, it's a big flat that's right here, and it's got a lot of little rock on it and things like that. And then it's got, um, it's got a drop off and it drops into the creek channel right out here behind the boat. I might be a little too shallow right here. I'm in eight and a half feet of water. I'm throwing up into about four. But this is just mainly to show you how I'm going to fish it. And then I'm going to pull out a little bit deeper and catch some fish. But this is basically all you're doing. You're casting it out. You're letting it sink to the bottom. And you're slowly dragging it. And I'm going to drag it fairly a little bit faster than what I normally would until I hit something. Something like I just bumped something right there. And I'm just going to shake it. So what I did is I just came up against something hard, like a rock or maybe a stick or a stump or a log or something like that. And I'm just lit, letting it sit up against that log and I'm sitting here shaking it. Cause that's the kind of stuff a bass on a flat or a point will hold on. And then I'm gonna pop it over top of it and I'm gonna drag it again. And notice I'm not dragging it with the reel. It's a drop your rod and reel in your slack and then pick up with your rod and you're just dragging it really slow. You get more sensitivity while you're dragging if you drag with your rod. And that's all I'm doing. And every time I bump something, I shake it just a little bit. I just want to get those that tail or that trailer and those uh, that skirt shaking just like that. Okay, when I feel like I'm out of the strike zone or out of the depth or away from the rocks or whatever I'm dragging on, I reel it in real fast and I make another cast. Same thing. And that's all there is to it. It's all about keeping contact with the bottom or keeping contact with what's there. Because as you're dragging, especially on these, these flats and these points that have very little stuff on them, but bass are there hanging on whatever stuff is on the, on the point, this is a great way to catch them. And there's something about jigs that just get the big bites. I mean, you can go shaky head and drop shot all day long and catch little fish, but if you want to find a big bite, you want to drag a jig or you want to go use a jig. Now, the way you know that it's not, if it's a hard spot or not is that it feels like it's coming across. I mean, with the sensitivity of these rods these days and the line and everything else, it feels like cocoon, cocoon, like you're bumping into things all the way down. And that's the feeling of a, of a hard 
a hard bottom. If it's a soft bottom, it feels like you're just kind of dragging it through mush. It just feels like a little bit of resistance as you're dragging it through there. And it's not, it doesn't stop and start and stop and start. So that's kind of how you know that it's a hard bottom. Anything, any kind of bait you're dragging on the bottom, that's how you can tell. Okay, so basically what I've done is I pulled up on a little bit deeper spot or deeper, deeper hump. The bait fish in the lake right now and everything, every, almost every bit of life that I've seen has been between eight and 12 feet deep. So I really wanna stay out here and fish a little bit deeper because if the bait are moving around in eight to 12 feet deep, there's gonna be bass sitting on a brush pile, rock, something at that depth, eight to 12 feet. So that's kind of why, kind of how I narrowed it down. And if you don't have a fish finder, the best thing to do is fish everything and then pay attention to how deep you were when you got bit. Same thing, I let it sink to the bottom. Okay, and the way I know it's on the bottom is that line stops going out. It starts to go slack. And then I just drag it on the bottom. <clears throat> All right, now one thing to remember is that when you're dragging this thing on the, on the bottom, you're not trying to set a land speed record for a record for a crawfish. I mean, you're you're imitating a crawfish. How fast do they how fast do they walk on the bottom? And that's kind of what you're trying to do is you're trying to drag it so slow that it looks like a craw. Boy, that bottom feels good. You see my, my rod getting snagged on things. Feels really good. I just hope the bass think that too. But anyway, just remember, don't go so fast. Very, very slow. It's painstakingly slow. And this is the biggest reason why people don't have confidence in a jig is they tend to fish it way too fast, specifically a dragging jig like a football jig. And whether you drag it up or down or up or to the side, it really doesn't matter. Just make sure that when you set the hook, you set it up over your shoulder. There's one right there. All right, guys, so I want you to remember something about jigs. If you want to gain confidence in them, you got to fish them. You got to fish them till you get bit. A football jig, although this is a smaller fish than I expected, <laughs> catches big fish and little fish but uh key is, is it catches fish and this fish has a hook down its throat all right so you guys get a bonus video real quick if I can get the focus to focus right let's get down to this all right I want you to look down this fish's throat it's got a hook down its throat. My goal is to get that hook flipped over in its gills. So what I do is I reach up in here, up under his gill plate. Hard to do this on video. Reach up under his gill plate and I grab it, if you can see it, I grab the hook just like this and I basically flip it upside down. Okay, and so the eye of the hook is coming out of his gills okay and then i reach in and i grab hold of the hook see how the hook's flipped over already see that hook reach in i grab the hook and it comes right out no blood just saved a fish now the biggest thing, like I said, is to remember is if you wanna gain confidence in a jig, you've gotta fish it. Leave everything at home. Don't take anything else with you but two jig rods and a handful of jigs and trailers and just go fishing. Um, and fish it that way every day until you get it, until you get bit and you can figure this thing out because I'm telling you, you will catch bigger fish with a jig than you will with any other bottom bait. You're not going to catch a lot of them, but you're going to catch some. So, well, like I said, be sure to uh, subscribe to my channel. 
Be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Let me help you teach them how to fish. Just show them my videos and I'll show them. And, uh, but more importantly, get out on the water, go and catch some fish. Have a great day. See ya. All right, guys. Well, real quick, um, I just got a package from Joshua Laws, a fan out of Fort Payne, Alabama. So I guess I'm going to start doing some, uh, what do they call them, mail time, whatever else. I'm going to start putting them on the end of videos. I might, if I get a bunch of them, I might do it on, a, on their own video. But anyway, thanks, Joshua. This is a huge box. I'm going to open it up here in a minute. If anybody else is interested on sending me anything for some odd reason, uh, I give you, I give you my PO box number. It's PO box four four two. Our Murchie, Georgia, three zero one zero five. I'll put it right down here so you guys can see it. But anyway, that's that's that. I'm gonna pop this open real quick. It's been sitting next to my desk for two days, maybe three, and it's killing me because it's heavy. So anyway, oh wow, these are like still in the package and stuff. says, hi, my name is Joshua Laws. I'm 15 years old. I live in Fort Payne, Alabama. Uh, huge fan. Thank you so much for letting me send you tackle. There's a little bit of everything in the box. Over 50 baits. Hope you like them and can't wait to see the unboxing. Awesome. Also put some parachute cords in, uh, bracelets in for my kids. And they love them because I make them all the time for them. Good colors too. Go dogs. Awesome. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I got some, a little Cordell spot. A little Cordell crankbait, a little Cordell crankbait, a whole bunch of Cordell crankbaits. Man, I haven't used these in years. Awesome. A little man's shallow runner, some fusion hooks, wide gaps, tackle box with a few odds and ends in, lipless crankbaits, buzz baits, jig. Just awesome, Joshua. Man, that's freaking cool. A little, another jig, some crane baits. Dang, this is cool. A lot of soft plastics. Some young flipping baits, lizards, worms. My goodness, missile baits, D bombs. Are these D bombs? Yep. Little D bombs. Rivet frogs. Dude, this is like a freaking ton of baits. What are these at the bottom? Stuff in bags. Looks like little custom deals. Man, Joshua, freaking awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll use them. I'm pretty sure my boys will use them. Um, unbelievable, man. Appreciate it. Thanks, bro. All right, guys. Well... Like I said, uh, my P.O. box will be the address. I'll put it down here. I'll put it in the description. Uh, if you want to send, any, send me anything, go ahead. Uh, appreciate it, Joshua. Take care.